The MBA Oath is a new book by Peter Escher and Max Anderson about bringing ethics back to business. Up next on the Penguin Business Beat, I had the opportunity to sit down with one of the authors, Peter Escher, to talk about his new book. Why do we need an oath for MBAs? Yeah, great question. So this book is about leadership and calling business leaders to a higher standard. Max and I both graduated from business school in 2009, and while we were there, a professor of ours said, uh, leadership is about bringing your best self so that you can bring the best out of others every day. Um, another thing that happened while we were in business school is that we entered into the midst of a terrible financial crisis. And so between this idea of being a leader and the reality of the financial crisis, the MBA at most was born. And the idea is that MBAs have a duty to participate in and lead our organizations in the best long-term way. Do you think there's something wrong with the way business schools are currently being run, that they need an oath to kind of hold them to a higher standard? When business schools were started, uh, let's say, 100 years ago, the idea was that they would be a profession, that there would be a code of conduct that would uh, boundary the learning of business in the same way that doctors and lawyers had a code of conduct. And we think our thesis is that over the past 100 years to the point where we sit in 2010, that business schools have gotten away from that idea of values being something that business students, uh, that MBAs need to learn. So do you think that's coming from the business schools themselves, or do you think that's being driven by the business environment? I think that it's a bit of both. Uh, I think that MBAs go to organizations uh, where they tend to be leaders, particularly MBAs from these so-called top-tier schools like Harvard and Stanford and Wharton and Kellogg. Uh, And when they get there, uh, they they are told uh, a couple of different competing ideas. One, that their company has a mission statement. And two, if their company is public, that there is a high emphasis on profits and profitability. And within that tension, uh, business schools try to prepare students and businesses try to boundary leaders. But it's a complex tension, and we think that the MBA oath, uh, with its focus on ethics and integrity, uh, creates a good framework for MBAs to follow as they enter into the business world. So how have people been responding to this? (laughs) MBAs certainly have been called a lot of things in the last couple of years. Uh, we saw an article that said MBAs should now be redefined as master of the business apocalypse because so many MBAs were leading financial institutions that had blown up. Uh, so we do get some resistance from uh, MBAs and those who are not MBAs who say uh, that this is just window dressing uh, on a problem that goes much deeper, Um, but we also find a lot of proponents, uh, both in business and in academia, who say business people uh, can and should stand up for uh, multiple stakeholders, yes, shareholders, but also customers, employees, uh, and the community in which businesses operate, and the MBA Oath is, uh, again, a good framework for doing that. You're listening to the Penguin Business Beat. For more information about the show, visit www.portfolioimprint.com. And now back to Peter Escher, co-author of The MBA Oath, who spoke to Courtney Young in March. Were there any people who felt that having to sign an oath would hold them back in their careers in business? I don't know if that sentiment was publicly stated by people. Uh, I think there is this idea that those who take the oath uh, will be at the mercy of those who don't take the oath uh, and are able to get away with bad conduct. Uh, our argument is that good conduct is always rewarding in the long term. I think there are a lot of cases in business and through business leaders that um, that make that point quite clearly. What made you decide to make it into a book? We thought if we're really going to make an impact on business, we should not be one school and one class uh, or one moment in time, but we should really create a platform in which other schools and classes could converse. You guys signed this oath in the spring of 2009, right? (laughs) 
So yes. the, the first group of signers have been out, uh, hopefully, working for almost a year now. I'm wondering what kind of feedback you're getting. Are people having trouble sticking to the oath? Are you having trouble? One of my classmates emailed me within a couple of months of taking a job and said, I've decided to transition uh, because of the way that my manager was treating customers, that we weren't telling our customers exactly the right thing when we were selling them products. Uh, and it highlighted this idea that even as a recent MBA, as somebody who is 27, 28 years old, there are situations where you can stand up for what you believe in and can choose to uh, walk away from a, a difficult situation. Uh, there certainly is a balance between the decisions that a recent MBA will face in business, which might be potentially junior level positions and, and those that are faced by CEOs of companies. But we hope that making the right decision today uh, as a recent MBA graduate will make people uh, have a better decision-making ability later on in their business careers when they are in, in real positions of power. You personally, do you feel like you have stuck to the MBA oath all the way through? The MBA oath is a reminder uh, of the commitment I made, and it's a reminder of my so-called best self. So in the same way that a wedding ring is a reminder of one's commitment, uh, the MBA oath is a reminder of the commitment that I made, and I do take it seriously, and I, I do consciously think about it as I uh, face decisions related to my career. Thank you so much for talking to me today.